Thanks everyone so much for joining me today. My name is Matt Fox and this is Break of Read. Today I have a special guest all the way from England, Robert Burton. How's it going today? Great, thanks. How are you? I'm good. What time is it over there again? Um, it is just past eight in the evening. Okay, and it, it's like seven past noon here, so that's it's just crazy to me. My time zones are always super weird to me. Um, so yeah, how have you been doing? How is quarantine treating you? How are things, you know, across the pond? How are you doing? Yeah, um, pretty good. I mean, yeah, considering the whole, well, everything that's going on, I, I've been good. It's been It's been really nice to kind of have a break from kind of, I mean kind of everything normal in the music world kind of being in kind of a, a proper routine it's nice to kind of have a bit of a change from that and try and kind of find my feet again which I'm enjoying yeah yeah definitely I I found that it's like definitely more of a time for me to figure out myself and like all the mm-hmm. things that make me like who I am because I feel like yeah. you know it's probably the same for you too when you're in like university and you're just going 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 you never get a chance to like sit down and like relax exactly. yeah I feel like I'm thinking a lot more than I usually do yeah um so would you mind telling me I know we've actually met before when I was over in London we met up and went for coffee and stuff and that was fun and I got to learn a little bit about you but would you mind telling everyone where you're from uh, where you've gone to school who you study with sure um so i'm from near cambridge in england you probably heard of it from the university um so i grew up there my my family are farmers so we grew up in very kind of rural countryside um and i started the saxophone when i was nine and then so i just had kind of local music teachers for a while and then when i was 13 i started studying at the guildhall school of music in london they have a kind of Saturday school. Um, so I started studying there uh, with a guy called Paul Stevens, um, who plays in the West End and does kind of lots of um, pit orchestra work. And so I had him as my teacher for a few, few years, and now I'm studying at the Royal Academy of Music in London cool. full time. Um, so my teacher there is Hugh Wigan, and I'm also having private lessons with Lars Malekush in Zurich on the side of that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. So how old did you say you were when you started playing? Uh, I think I was nine. Nine? Okay. That's that's about the same for most people around here, too. Yeah. That's cool. Awesome. So um, at the Royal Academy of Music, is there like a huge saxophone program? Do you find yourself, you know, doing a lot of sax ensemble, sax choirs, or, or is it mainly just kind of more independent study? Yeah, no, so our saxophone studio is like absolutely tiny. Currently, there's only one other saxophonist there. Wow. Um, So it's like really small. It's the smallest in the whole of the UK. Um, But I find that really nice because it means that there's different opportunities for saxophonists that are there. Um, And that's actually why I chose to go there because I thought I could study somewhere where there's 20 saxophonists all kind of wanting the same opportunities or I could go somewhere where I'm kind of I don't know in a a different um, well I'm looking for different opportunities so I've had to kind of make my own saxophone quartets kind of make some of my own opportunities um, which is really nice yeah and I know you you've been doing some uh, other really interesting chamber ensembles other than like sax quartets what are some other things you've been doing yeah so I've got a um, violin, saxophone, and piano trio, which I spend kind of most of my chamber music time doing, which has been a really nice project to do it on the side because it's not often that you get to play lots of. Yeah, stuff. and they're they're all located in London, the Royal Academy. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. We're all students there. So That's cool. awesome. Yeah, so um, you've been doing some like amazing things over there, and one thing I wanted to highlight and you know ask you to talk about is your um, all your work you've done with BBC and the musicians program there. Would you mind talking about that for a bit? Yeah, so for those who don't know, in the UK we have a like a televised music competition called BBC Young Musician. Um, and it's kind of like a kind of classical music version of X Factor or all of those mm-hmm. kind of things. Um, and it's kind of, it is a fairly big thing and it happens every every two years. It's this televised competition and Growing up, I always used to watch it on TV. Every every two years, I'd, I'd get so excited to watch these young musicians. It's up to um, kind of 18, 19 years old. 
that would go and there'd be various rounds that the young musicians would have to do and then they'd have to compete against each other then there'll be like someone who's crowned the winner and it just seemed really good fun when I was growing up and I loved watching it um so I actually applied for that when I applied when I was I think 18 or 19 um okay. and well I I managed to get through to the grand final so which is like the last stage so there was loads of kind of various tv rounds that I had to play on um which was an amazing experience absolutely terrifying but it meant that I had <laughs> I like bet. exposure from from the competition with loads of people watching at home and it's quite a prestigious thing to do so yeah it was an amazing experience and then in the grand final I got to play with the city of Birmingham symphony orchestra which is kind of one of the leading UK professional symphony orchestras which was obviously an amazing experience that's you so don't cool get to do that kind of as a as a 19 year old so yeah it was amazing that's so cool yeah, I'm trying to think if there's there. I'm sure there are things like very similar to that here, but that just sounds like such a cool experience. Um, for some reason, whenever I think of that competition, all I can think of is like America's Got Talent, and just like <laughs> the crowds you get for that and the way the judges work. But yeah, that's so cool. Uh, yeah. What were some of the pieces you had to play for that? Um, so I could completely choose my own repertoire. So um, for the first televised round, it was that was kind of the woodwind category final they called it. So I was competing against other woodwind players. So it wasn't just a saxophone thing. Um, so I chose pieces by actually Paul Creston, um, some Piazzolla, and some Graham Thicken. Um, and then kind of through the various rounds and I played different repertoire. And then for the grand final, I played um, Paul Creston concerto. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, so I wanted to talk about maybe some things that you've been doing outside of music, um, especially during, you know, times like these. And you're home right now, right? You're not in London? Yeah, yeah, I'm home. Yeah, so are, are there things that you're finding yourself doing that maybe you, like, wouldn't be doing if you were in school regularly? Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, when I'm in school, normally I don't really have... It feels like I don't have time for anything kind of apart from my studies or or music or anything that I'm doing with rehearsals um but since being home I'm kind of finding so much time that I'm like oh I've got I, like I could do anything so I've been spending a lot of a lot more time kind of going for walks with my family and just kind of enjoying the countryside which obviously you don't get in London um, right so I've been enjoying that a lot I've also been doing loads of artwork because I'm a keen artist I've also been doing yeah, yeah, I'm going to put your uh, your Instagram for your art page in the description. Go yeah, for it, it. You're so amazing. Like, you're so talented. Oh, it's fine. crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, anything else? Um, yeah, I mean, I've learned to cut people's hair. I've been cutting my family's hair. That's a, a good skill, I guess, I've developed. Uh, I've been reading a lot more. I think I've just been doing all the kind of little things that I kind of want to be doing in London, but I feel like I don't have time for. Um, so exactly. It's, it's really nice. Yeah, that's great. Um, I, one of the things that whenever I think of you, I think of your Instagram page and I just think of food, coffee. Cause like literally every time you post something on Instagram, I'm, I always like send it to you through direct message. And I'm like, dude, I'm hungry now. You <laughs> always post like the best pictures of food and pastries. So do you like miss going to all those shops? Cause I'm sure it's not as easy right now. Exactly. Yeah. No, I do. I think I think that's probably one of my favorite things about London. It's just like the amazing food that there is there, and that's kind of probably what I spend most of my time and most of my money doing. Just going to loads of bakeries and restaurants because yeah, that's I guess I don't know if I can call it a passion, but if it if I can, then oh, definitely. Is that's definitely a passion. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, I remember I the the place you brought me when I was there in London was it was really good. All right, so we talked a little bit about your chamber music experiences and we talked about your trio. Um, you mentioned being a part of a saxophone quartet. Are you guys still together, the same group? Yes, yeah, we are. Um, so we've been together for, for three years now. and Great. Um, yeah, it, it's just so nice being in a, in a saxophone quartet, especially since, since because I don't have one at, at um, the Royal Academy of Music. It means I've had to find players externally to form this quartet, and they're, they're quite a bit older, so it's, it's really nice working with musicians that are kind of 26 kind of years old it, it yeah different viewpoints which is which is nice and we've done lots of performing and various 
just kind of classic repertoire. And yeah, it's great fun. That's awesome. Are they close by or are they like fairly yeah, far? Yeah, so, so we all live in London. Oh, that's perfect. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So I've been asking a couple people this question and I just wanted to, you know, see maybe do you have a hidden talent or something? Because um, my friend Brian, you probably know Brian Catcher. Yeah. We spent some time juggling on, on the video. So oh, just, do you have something you'd like to share? Um, I'm not sure. I feel like... I feel like I do have a really good hidden talent, but I can't think of what it is. Okay. It's the kind of thing that I will remember, like when I'm in the shower and think, oh, <laughs> I wish I'd have remembered when we were having this chat. Um, but no, I don't know. I'm sure there is something, but I, I can't think of it now. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, or maybe like a hidden hobby. Ooh, hidden hobby. Um, I don't know. I feel like all of my hobbies aren't hidden, like <laughs> art and music and food and all the things I like. Um, I don't know. Maybe come back to me on that. Okay. Okay. So were there any things that you were maybe planning on doing this summer that unfortunately came to a halt? Any summer saxophone programs? Any just collaborative projects that you were planning on doing? Yeah. So I was actually planning on coming to America um, to do ASA. Which I was really oh, looking cool. forward to because I've never been to America before and I was going to plan like a, an amazing kind of week in New York beforehand and yeah, it was going to be great and I was going to be there on my 21st birthday but um, obviously that's not yeah. happening, it's a shame. I was also actually, I think at the moment, supposed to be taking part in the Josip Nochta competition in um, okay. Croatia. Wow. Um, obviously it's not happening. And I was also going to be um, doing um, the saxophone course in Gap in France. Cool. Um, see that's not happening. So yeah, that's yeah. a shame. Were, were you going to be doing anything exciting that you're missing out on? Yeah, I was thinking about um, applying for GAP and mm -hmm. um, the Great Plains Saxophone Workshop here in uh, Oklahoma. It happens every year. I was thinking about doing a couple of things. Um, I had some performances lined up that I was maybe thinking of doing, but obviously that came to a halt. But, you know, mm -hmm. there's always next year and you and I are both, you know, fairly young relatively exactly. speaking, so exactly. we have time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any future plans, things going on next uh, academic year or this fall that you feel, you know, you're looking forward to? Um, well, I feel like most of my future plans are actually going to be plans that were supposed to happen kind of around this kind of spring or summertime mm -hmm. that are now going to be deferred to next year. Um, I was supposed to be doing well, I was supposed to be premiering a new saxophone concerto by a composer called Paul Carr. Um, so cool. I, I was supposed to do that actually about, I think it was the week that um, London went into lockdown. So okay. that will be rescheduled um, for over the next year, which I'm looking forward to. I'm also premiering a concerto by a composer called Michael Lawson. I'm premiering a work by a UK composer called Brian Elias. And I'm actually going to cool. be playing one of his other pieces at... Um, Wigmore Hall, which is like my favorite London venue, which is exciting. That's so awesome. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. You're doing a lot of great stuff and I'm looking forward to hearing any recordings that you might get um, this you. fall. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a little curious because I, I don't really know what it's like over there, but what is it? what was it like being in London when things started to shut down? Like how do you think people were taking it seriously? Were mm. restaurants closed immediately? Um, it was it was really weird because like obviously like um, China and then Italy got bad really quickly and Spain and um, it was actually around the time that it was getting bad in Europe and I was kind of traveling between Germany and, and Zurich at that time mm -hmm. before coming back to London and everything kind of seemed a bit kind of unsteady then um, with lots of talk of oh maybe things will need to get shut down I came back to London and everyone's like oh it's all fine no need to worry like it's all it's all gonna be okay um and then it was kind of within the next few weeks that i guess people started to be more worried because they'd hear about in other countries that people were shutting right. down schools etc um but m my my music college were like no we're we're, we're gonna keep going it's, it's all kind of gonna be fine and then it was kind of all within the space of a few days, then everything just stopped and everything got cancelled. So it was really, really sudden. 
and um, then a few days later they were going to put London on lockdown because people weren't taking it seriously enough and it was at that point that I was like mm, I think I need to escape London so I yeah. decided to come back home with my family um, so I've, I've been here since and I guess the situation is still quite serious they're kind of relaxing some of the um, the rules that they've put yeah. in but, but yeah so hopefully it's, it's going to be more safe kind of over the next few weeks and months but yeah yeah I, I hope so it, it seems like it's it's I mean it is it doesn't seem like it it is a very serious problem here in the states yeah. and I know there are a lot of states that um maybe in my opinion are moving a tad too quickly like like maybe the one I'm in uh right now Arizona it's, it's things are very much opening up and I'm driving past um you know all the big streets uh in Scottsdale and Tempe and bars are open and it's packed you know clubs yeah. are open and you see just all these people not wearing masks and anything and it's it's a little frightening um yeah no the UK is the kind of the same at the moment like especially like the the seaside and all the beach areas they're like flooded with people and yeah. there's not much social distancing going on and I think we're probably going to hit another peak sometime soon just because I think I think once they start relaxing um some of the rules that people are just going to think, oh, it's fine, I can I can go out now, but right, it's, it's still dangerous, which is a shame. Yeah, well, hopefully things you know get back to normal soon. I'm yeah. I'm hoping that things do here, you know, by the fall at least, so that because my my little brother is coming to ASU this upcoming oh, year, exactly. so yeah, he's going to be well, studying music, and I hope he gets like a cool. first normal normal yeah. semester. Exactly. Yeah, it'd be a shame if he doesn't. What's he play? Percussion, and he plays saxophone. Uh, he Ooh, he's actually nice. taking part in Shauna Penick's uh, live warm up the other day, which was really very fun. Very nice. Very nice. I need to join yeah. those warm up sometime soon. Yeah. I wonder what. So I guess it will be at like six p.m. for you. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoy it. Well, yeah, it's about that time, and you know, do you have a read that you'd like to break for us? I do indeed. I don't know if this is a, a good read or a bad read. I just kind of picked it up. Well, all my reads at the moment seem to be fairly bad, so I'm hoping... Is it a Van Doren? Yeah, yeah, Van yeah. Doren. Yeah, I'm hoping awesome. it's the best read ever, but oh well. It's going to be smashed anyway. <laughs> yeah, you can break it however you want. Cool. Um, oh, I don't know. I probably shouldn't break it onto my hand. Um, here's, a, here's a random notebook. Should I just go for it? Go for it, yeah. Okay. Do you, do you break one as well at the same time or not? No, I, I will go through way too many reads if I break one with every person. I'll that. I'll <laughs> okay. Oh, that was loud. Hey. Look at that. It kind of like curled in. Exactly. I top. tend to do that to basically all of my reads, actually. Um, yeah. You, not out of anger, just because it's kind of fun. Yeah, those people, when they're like reaching their end, it's just like... Yeah. Like, yeah. Just got to go. Yeah. So, awesome. This was so great to have you on today. I wanted to come back to the question one more time. Maybe maybe yeah. you found something. Do you have a hidden talent or a hidden activity, hobby that you like to do? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I Totally I, okay. I can't think. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to let you know. No, that's totally <laughs> fine. Well, you know, hopefully I get to see you in person at some point um yeah, if definitely. you ever do come to america you know i go back and forth between new york and here often so yeah i hopefully i get to see you soon and it was so yeah. great to have you on today uh, thank and you very much you know, for having me on. yeah i just want to say it's so awesome that we're able to do this like exactly. sit down and have a chat while you're like all the way over there that's just mind-blowing to me yeah and thank you for setting up this series talking to saxophonists it's it's great that we've got kind of something like this to learn about various other saxophonists now and it's it's a really nice thing that you're doing thanks so much yeah i really enjoy doing it yeah, yeah. well this was so much fun thank you much thank you so much for coming on thank you for having me all right i'll talk to you later robert have a great rest of your night see you